8th Avenue. What do you got? Got this from 48th Street and 8th Avenue. Well, All right, take him upstairs. Take a taxi. Right, go. Go. Okay, hold it a minute, hold it a minute. Police officer Kennel, 27th Precinct. I'll be back to you in half a minute. Hey, Sarge, uh, got a call for Sergeant Delaney. He's not here. It's important. It's from Mother Cabrini Hospital. His wife just had an emergency operation. He's out on that homicide on West 81st. Try the radio car. Maybe you can patch it in. Excuse me, Sergeant. Yeah. Yeah, I checked the gutters from here to the corner. I didn't find it. Okay, check the garbage bag. See what you come up with. Hey. Hey. When did you get out of the academy? Two months ago. Check both sides of the street. Thanks. You got a nice way with words. <laughs> All right, let's roll him over. Easy. Hold it. Wait a minute. Where's Delaney? Delaney! Yo. Come here. What do you got? There's a wallet here underneath. Wallet. Suppose it fell out of his pocket? I don't know. It was just lying on the sidewalk. Easy. Jeez. Pipe or a club? No. You know, these facial lacerations are from his death fall. Now, there's no depression or any crushing, but there was a definite puncture to the hole back of the skull. Hammer. Yeah, it's possible. Depends on how deep the penetration is. I'll know better when I get him downtown. Anything else you can tell me? That I can see. But you know, he's a husky guy. It's amazing yeah. he didn't put up a fight. Maybe the poor bastard never had a chance. Show the ice. Get this dust, will you? Yes, sir. Could you get me a pot? Come on, Doc, I'll get you. Thank you. Of course, you could get me a preliminary report by morning. Oh, yeah. No, I could never refuse a pretty face. Doc, you got great taste and very good eyesight. Hey, Sarge. Yeah. There's an emergency call for you. Some kind of an emergency. Well, what what happened? Well, <clears throat> several hours ago, Barbara began running a high fever and experiencing severe pain in the lumbar region. She was going into shock, so we thought it best to operate. We uh, had to remove one of her kidneys. Remove? What? Well, she's very badly infected, diseased, rotted. We had no other choice. Disease with what? Well, we're still not sure. It's down in the lab. We'll know in the morning. Dr. Sergeant, a person can live with one kidney. Listen, she's been in here one week. You told me originally that even if it was a kidney stone, she'd be out of here in a couple of days. You know what I said, Sergeant? I was wrong. You were wrong. Sergeant, I'm not God. Yeah, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? Well, I'd like to talk to her. Well, you can't for several hours yet. She's still in the recovery room under heavy sedation. Thanks a lot. All right, we got we got a car on that. Yeah, remember, 16 is on its way. Yeah, she'll be there in a few minutes. Yeah. You got anything for me, Sergeant? Yeah, here you go. Thanks, sir. Listen, take that up to Delaney. Tell him just came in. Are you supposed to be working 4 to 12 this week? What's he doing here? Came in a couple of hours ago. Hey, listen, when you see him, take it easy on him. His wife had some kind of emergency operation. All right. All right, it's a night out. Johnny. Listen, uh, Curdy asked me to drop this off for you. What's happening? Nothing much, just killing time. There's got to be something to have here this late at night. 
Yeah, DOA on uh, West 81st Street. Some guy zapped another guy on the head with some kind of hammer. He crushed his head. Jeez. West 81st, there used to be a safe area. Nothing safe. You know, Carella had something like that last week on uh, 73rd in Amsterdam. Where? On uh, 73rd in Amsterdam. Look, I, uh, I heard about your wife. Uh, she gonna be all right? I don't know. Well, look, uh, if there's anything I can do, uh, you know where I'm at, huh? Sure. Uh, John. Yeah? What time's Corella come on, you know? Uh, he's working days this week, 8 to 4. Thank you. Mr. Delaney? Mr. Delaney? Yeah. You can see your wife now. Thank you. Dr. David Mede. Dr. David Mede. You're needed in post-op. Hey, kiddo. You look great. You don't look so hot yourself, wise guy. Well, you know how it is with us New York cops. Out partying all night long. Anything good? Yeah, a couple of centerfolds. Not much. How you feeling? Lousy. Food's okay. Some food. What'd they get me for? Kidney. You know, a guy was telling me the other day that a person can live just as easily with one kidney as, as two kidneys. He told me that just the other day. You proposing to me, Sergeant? Suppose I am proposing. What do you plan to do about it? Girl's got to be crazy to marry a cop. And you wouldn't know anything about that now, would you?
Jesse Torres, male, Puerto Rican, 439 East 89th, age 21, occupation waiter, unmarried. Now, according to his brother, he was clean. No drugs, didn't gamble, no known enemies. Somebody just felt like whacking him over the head with a hammer, simple. A dull night, nothing else to do, right? What time did it happen, you say? No, oh, it was about 11, 11.30. It's in the report. We thought we had a suspect, a uh, hooker named Sonny Jordine. We got there and we found her going through Torres's pockets. We booked her on attempted theft. Her pimp posted bail. He had her out by morning. Did you check any other precincts to find out if they had this type killing? I checked it. Come on, Delaney. You kidding? A spick waiter probably couldn't speak English, gets his skull cracked for skimping on his kusha fritos. <laughs> what city are you living in, man? I'm sorry I asked you. What'd you put it down as? A mugging victim. A guy with a hole in his head is a mugging victim? Hey, look. I was planning to run it through the next day, but Broughton pulled me off and switched me to computer analysis. You meet him yet? I put in a few requests, but he's been tied up. You're lucky. Another of your friendly, ambitious, run-of-the-mill assholes got ideas for reforming the entire precinct. You know, today the 27th, tomorrow the governor's mansion. So, uh, what's happening on your retirement? I got a few more weeks. So why are you jerking yourself off on this thing? Throw it back in the pile, forget it. Who gives a shit? Nobody. I'd like to run us through the teletype with other precincts. You mind? Fine. Surprise for you. Fresh roasted violets. Why, oh, it's this time of year. They must have cost the earth. <sighs> Fell off a truck when I was coming over here. Fell off a truck. Now tell me, what can I do for you, sweetheart? Just sit there and talk to me. Sure. Is it nice, huh? Well, it's not bad. It's a little cloudy. It's getting colder, though. Have any of the stores put up their Christmas decorations yet? No. Nope. They're waiting for you to get well and get out of this place. Are you taking care of yourself? Oh, sure, I'm fine. No way. You don't do too fine without me. Now, how could that ever happen? How's Rocky? Rocky? He's tough, he's fat, and he's sassy. Don't let him take advantage of you. He won't. He's a good cat. Honey Bunch had a cat. Who? Honey Bunch in the book. When I was eight, they bought the whole set for me. Underneath the tree in Santa Claus paper. <laughs> She's on the cover with the wind in her hair and holding these lovely flowers. Where she lived, the trees were always out. And nothing bad could ever happen. Repeated contusions, temporal lobe. Repeated contusions, frontal lobe. Coning of cerebellum. Marked evidence of edema. And the lungs, 1,500 grams salt water. Note, hematoma over scapula. On the left, and the approximate diameter is 7 to 11 centimeters. All right, filer, an unidentified female drowning victim. Caucasian, well, Delaney. I catch it, usually down here an hour after I send in my report. Are you losing my touch? Well, you read the Gilbert autopsy and you've got some questions. 
I read the report and I got a couple of questions. You got a couple of minutes? I'll oh, but make it quick, will you? I got them stacked up out in yeah, the court. First of all, I read that, uh, that autopsy says that the blow that killed Gilbert was circular. That's right. Does that also mean that the implement used was circular? No. 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 You ain't even look. What I said was, and I think I remember correctly. Yeah, there it is. All right, there it is. I said the wound appears to be circular. No mention of the weapon. It also mentioned the fact that the penetration was curved downward. That's right. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. That means that the point of the weapon is lower than the shaft. <laughs> like, like an erection losing interest. Could have been a pickaxe. <laughs> no. Why? I'll tell you something, Delaney, wait a minute. If you could find a smaller version of a pickaxe, you might be on the right track. What else can you tell me about the wound? Well, penetration was straight down into the skull. Now, what does that tell you? Well, it could tell me that the killer is at least four or five inches taller than the victim. Hmm? Yeah, unless he was standing on a box. Did you see a box out there? No, no Doc, six there was feet. no box. Six feet. And quick and powerful. And also well dressed and white. Otherwise, Gilbert would never let him get that close to him. You know, Delaney, the intricacies of your mind never cease to amaze me. Say, hey, Doc, just a minute. I got another piece of work for you here. This autopsy was written by one of your deputies about a week ago, and I think it's related to the Gilbert case. Would you read it for me? Put it on the desk, would you? You know, this is a Christmas rush. Put it on the desk. Call me tomorrow. Hello, Rocky.
Good morning, Nick. Good morning. Anything come out of those tourist traces I set up? First basket on your left. No, it's going to take me about, about 3.30. OK. Listen, I want you to assign a couple of guys that go through these and pull out any unsolved street murders that occurred in five boroughs in the last three years. Now, I'm only interested in killings where they were used a hammer or some kind of a spike. I got to have authorization to hand out special details. I'm giving you authorization. OK, Delaney, but it's your ass. If the penetration was round, that rules out almost any uh, possibility that the weapon uh, was medieval. Uh, we're not absolutely certain, Mr. Langley, but uh, we feel at this time that the nearest guess we can make is that the uh, puncture was circular. Yeah. You see, uh, uh, Sergeant, before the Industrial Revolution, it was very difficult to hand forge uh, any metal into a circle. Uh, most ironwork was done on an anvil with a hammer and pounded into various shapes. Uh, to engineer a, a cone or a circle was a, a tedious process and offered no particular advantage in hacking through the shield of another warrior. In truth, in all my years as the curator of arms and armor in this museum, I cannot recall a single ancient war hammer or a hatchet uh, made of metal that coned down to a, 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 a round point. Hmm. What about something more recent? For instance, something that could be hidden in a newspaper or possibly in a coat. Yes, probably. What you're looking for is something more like a, a, a tool than a weapon. However, I'd be glad to check through my uh, research books uh, and see what I can find. That's very kind of you. Would it take very long? No, not very long. You'd care to come back this afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, we close at six. I'll be back in time. Delaney, I'm from the 27th Precinct. I wonder if I could have a word with you. Yes, sure. First of all, please accept my condolences about your husband. And uh, secondly, I was wondering, did you know whether he was planning to meet anybody when he came home that night? No, he wasn't. He was just on his way home to have some meatloaf and watch TV. Did he usually work that late? Just when he had to get out his end of the year statement. I've already told another police officer all of this. Yes, I know. Did he have any, uh, any enemies that you knew of? Enemies? Enemies. Of course he had enemies. He worked hard for a living. He saluted the flag. He loved his children. And after seven years, I think he even still loved me. What hard-working person in this city doesn't have enemies? Sorry. Yeah, I know, I know. Just so damn rotten, you know what I mean? We're such a good man. And... <sighs> you want to do me a favor, Mr. Policeman? Until you find whoever it was that murdered my husband, don't tell me you're sorry. Please. Sleep a little more. No. That's all I do. Is that for me? Yes. 
message to you. And I think you're gonna like it. Just hold them. <laughs> We saw at Greenport, we talked to the man about selling it, and he didn't want to. Well, we got a letter this morning, and he thinks he wants to sell the house. And I was thinking that maybe in a couple of weeks, when you get stronger, we could drive up there. Maybe spend a very long weekend. Mm -hmm. hmm? Now. I'm ready now. Now? Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> Come on. Maybe after just a little nap. for the book. Anytime, kiddo. in the sling delaney. Captain Broughton came by while we're sorting it out. He wants to see you first thing in the morning. Good, I want to see him too. I'm afraid, Mr. Langley, I've been wasting your valuable time. On the contrary, Sergeant. This merely confirms what both of us suspected, that it's not an ancient weapon you're looking for, it's a modern tool. With that in mind, uh, uh, during my lunch hour, I went through our picture file. Now, this first one is a bricklayer's hammer. The second is a tool used by carpenters. And the third is a hammer used by upholsterers to tack in their uh, fabrics. Notice the curved uh, uh, coned end on each of them. They don't curve downward as they should. Precisely my conclusion, Sergeant. I'm only showing you these to indicate the type of weapon that must have been used. In the morning, I plan to visit several uh, hardware stores and see uh, what else I can find. That won't be necessary, Mr. Langley. Thank you, but it won't be necessary. Sergeant, uh, uh, I'm an aging armory expert who sits around going to waste. Use me. All right, Mr. Langley. You have a go at it. See what you come up with, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
Funny, isn't it? I'm coming, you're going. You got any idea why they assigned me this command, Delaney? I was put in here because this precinct had become a shithouse. Sloppy, inefficient, antiquated. They needed somebody to clean it up, put it in touch with the 20th century. That's me. Now, Delaney, I have made my reputation kicking ass and never sucking up to the brass. And I intend to make the 27th a shining example of how mechanization and good old-fashioned discipline can turn a piss hole back into a police station. I do on absolute loyalty, dedication, and everybody doing what they're told to do. And when I order people to do a certain job, I don't want anyone taking them off for a special assignment. Now, that brings us to you, Dwayne. Captain, I've been working on the Gilbert murder. And I think there's a link between his killing and several other killings of an Wait, 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 wait. Delaney, That's... you're not listening. I don't want to hear theories about murders taking place in other parts of the city. But if I'm right, Captain, there's a psycho running around the town. Delaney, I'm telling you for the last time, I don't want to hear it. All I care about is cleaning up the garbage in this dump. I got enough whores, pimps, queers, freaks roaming around out there to start my own Macy's parade. So if you got... Jack the Ripper going down on Lizzie Borden in the middle of Times Square. I don't want to know about it. As you're not going to be around much longer, Sergeant, I won't cite you for insubordination. Delaney, you got a super fine record here. One I'd be damn proud to go out with. So for the few days you've got left, I recommend you rest on your laurels and uh, stay out of my way. Nice to meet you, Dewey. Is it okay, Captain, if I stay on the Gilbert case? Whatever makes you happy, Sergeant. Thank you. Uh, can I be any uh, assistance to you, sir? Uh, that depends. I'm interested in something like this, uh, but smaller. Well, uh, how's this one? Uh, uh still uh, too big. I require something more compact, something that can be hidden and has a sharp point. Well, uh, perhaps if you tell me what you need it for, uh, I mean, camping, gardening, uh, hiking in the mountains. Uh, it's to kill someone. Wonderful. Kill someone. <laughs> of course. Who says old folks don't have a sense of humor, huh? <laughs> Nothing humorous about it. Ah, that's more like it. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> Still too thick to really Penetrate the skull. Must have uh, more of a spike. A spike that curves down, if you follow me. Yeah, I follow you, sir. Uh, listen, perhaps I should call my boss. Huh? Why bother? You seem to have a good head on your shoulders. Uh, you rattled off a, a list of, of activities before. Would you say them again, please? You mean uh, camping, gardening, hiking? No, uh, you said hiking in the mountains. What about mountain climbing? Don't they use special equipment for that? Yeah, but we don't have that kind of stuff here. Uh, where do they have that kind of stuff? Well, I guess you could find it in some sort of a sporting goods shop, you know? Ah, uh, thank you so much, young man. You've been most helpful. It's uh, Sergeant Delaney. Hello, Sergeant. How are you, Mr. Gilbert? I hope I'm not disturbing you. Just a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Would you like to come in? No, no, no. We can we can talk right here. Uh, did you and your husband ever live in Brooklyn Heights? No. Did he ever have any business in Brooklyn Heights? I don't think so. Did you ever at any time live in Queens in the Kew Gardens? No. We lived right here from the time we were married. 
That's fine. It helps me a great deal. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Right. Sergeant, I'd like to apologize for yesterday. I was just upset, you know. I mean, I really appreciate your efforts, and I want you to know if I could ever help you in any way, please feel free to call me. That's very nice, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You got a visitor. Honey, see if you can get some cigarettes. Irish cop. What do I think of next? What are you in here for, Sonny? Some crummy narc claimed I tried to set him a kilo of grass. Did you? I don't smoke joints. I cop them. Got a cigarette? Want one? Don't smoke. <sighs> You've been in here before. Listen, about uh, 10 days ago, you found a wallet in the street. Oh, man, that's ancient history. Yeah. Uh, there was a dead guy next to the wallet. Skull was crushed. Name of Torres. What does that got to do with me? I already told my story. The guy was dead. What'd you expect me to do? I don't know if you know this, but you know that they could reopen that case and charge you with an accessory to murder? You know that? Here, thanks a lot. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't get up tight. I want to ask you something about that night. Did you see anybody there? Particularly a guy. Did you see anybody in the area? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um... Think about it, will you please? Down the corner, a guy, uh, fast. He was walking fast, wearing a black raincoat. His face. Did you see his face? Faces ain't my business. Anything else? No. Hey, wait a minute. Here, Sonny. I got your cigarette. Thank you. What's that? Tell me about this. Well, this is an ice axe. It's used mostly for glacier climbing. You know, as a cane, or you can drive it into the ice as a rope support. When is uh, this used? Well, at extremely high altitudes, when the ice is like concrete, this is used to chop out hand and footholds. Is there a shorter model? Well, you want an ice hammer. Why didn't you say so in the first place? How's that? Perfect. My dear, you've made an aging curator ecstatic. your friendly face here. My friendly face has been looking for you to ask you whether you had a chance to read the Torres report. Oh, Listen, I'm gonna call you this afternoon. Yes, I read it. What'd you find? Very similar. To the Gilbert case? Yeah, yeah, very similar. And in the first place, both men were struck from behind, as you know, but in both the skulls, the wounds were circular in shape. Ah, now you're telling me that the implement is circular in shape. Something else, too. There were bone fragments found in the hair of both victims. Yeah? How do you account for that? 
I can't. Why? Well, it... Well, look, let's just say this, that apparently the weapon made a larger hole coming out than it made going in. Do you think there's enough evidence here for me to get a court order to exhume the Torres body? Well, you better get it, otherwise you're never going to be sure. Now, look, I'm terribly sorry. No, 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 not yet. Ever hear of a man called Dr. Vincent Bernardi? Vincent Bernardi? Sure. Uptown doctor, uptown diseases. Why? A couple of days ago, he operated on my wife, removed her kidney. Dr. Weinhold, oh. we have a patient waiting. Sorry to hear that. Don't misunderstand me. No, wait, wait, wait. He's a fine physician from all I'm able to gather, and, I, and a fine man. I don't know. I'm not too sure. I can't seem to get through to him. I want to ask him questions from time to time about my wife, and he I don't think he cares. Come on, Delaney. Most doctors care very deeply, but some can't show it, that's all. How's she doing? Not too bad. She's doing all right. She's got a good doctor. She's going to be fine. Anything I can do, you call me. I'm here all the time. And exhume that Torres body, would you? I want to get a look at the skull. I'll do it. Thanks, Doc. Mr. Langley, I'm sorry I'm late. I didn't expect you so soon. Uh, it's all right, Sergeant. I, 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 as a matter of fact, I have something. No, 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 no. Let's get in here. Uh, Sergeant, would you excuse this place? What'd you find? I call it luck or, or something, but I think uh, perhaps I, I found the murder weapon. Where did you find this? A uh, sporting goods store on uh, uh, Lower Broadway. I must say it's damn close right down to the jagged teeth, except this is a triangular tip. And it's already been confirmed that the weapon that the killer uses is a round tip. Did you see anything like that down there? Uh, no, and I've been to a half dozen stores uh, already. Thank you, Mr. Langley. Uh, however, there are one or two stores on my list I haven't been to yet. Perhaps I'll try them in the morning. All right, but don't overdo it. Uh, you don't know me, Sergeant. I, uh, I like being good to the last drop. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank Where's uh, Dr. Bernardi? I'd like to see him. Dr. Bernardi isn't on duty tonight. Well, how do I get him? Can I page him? He must be somewhere I can get him. Sir, he's not on duty tonight. You can talk to his associate, Dr. West. I don't want to talk to his associate. I want to talk to him. God damn it. Barbara, 
It's Edward. Don't be frightened. Everything's gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be fine. Everything's, everything's taken care of, Barbara. Everything's fine. Shh. Stopped at a walk painted white. And now Honey Bunch followed her daddy and her mommy up this walk and found herself at the steps of the cunningest bungalow she had ever seen. It was painted white and it had green window boxes and green shutters with little white acorns painted on them. The small room had five neatly made beds positioned next to each other and a table with a bowl of cheerful flowers in the center. Honey Bunch leaned forward and smelled the flowers. Their scent was very pleasant. Best of all, when she looked up, she saw through a window a view of the shimmering, glorious, sunlit lake that stretched far across the horizon. On the closest shore, Honey Bunch could see a number of other girls her age swimming, splashing and paddling canoes. Their laughter drifted up toward her like a happy song. Everyone was having such a gay, good time. Honey Bunch turned toward her mommy and daddy and smiled the smile they'd been waiting for. The one that said she was not afraid anymore. I have a feeling, thought Honey Bunch, as she studied her new brightly colored surroundings. There's going to be lots and lots of surprises for her. I just have to mind my manners and stay alert. This side we got the hunters and the campers. You make a purchase of any equipment around here, you get a catalog for life, maybe longer. Anyone who does any mountain climbing knows our catalog. It's the only one of its kind in the world. I got subscribers for the first day we open this dump. You mean you got all the names on file here? Sure. Once a solid apple customer, always a customer. That's my motto. In short, if someone moves, you strike out the old address and you put a new address on, right? That's right, sure. And I send the names to the mail order company, and they send out the catalogs. And then originally, you must tear off the name and address from the sales receipt. Sure. You don't have to ask. We do it all. Another brilliant Sal Apple motto. Can I borrow these for a couple of days? Sure, take them. Hey, do me a favor. Don't bring them back, huh? I'll even deliver. No, no, no. I got a car. It's all right. OK, I'll deliver them to your car. Now, what else can I do for you? Yeah, I'd like to buy this. Keep it. But it's my contribution to crime prevention. If the guy you're looking for turns out to be one of my customers, I'll cancel the subscription. My motto is Sal Apple don't do business with bums. Hey, you two guys, come on, you gangsters. Get those files, stick them out to the guy's car. Hurry up, boy. Don't stand around here all day long. Come on, for crying out loud, do a little work around here for a change. I can't see. I got something I want to show you. 
This body was brought in this morning. Accident victim. Name of Feinberg. Stepped off a curb on Riverside Drive, ran into a speeding auto, and died of broken everything. What struck me was the familiarity of these wounds. You see that one right there in the skull? Yeah. All right, circular in shape. It's not a very deep penetration. See this one on his shoulder here? Mm -hmm. All right, circular in shape. And that broke his collarbone. Now there's one on his lower back here. You see that? Yeah. All right, circular in shape. I just missed his lung. Well, Doc, when you write your report, could you emphasize these wounds so that I might be able to convince somebody downtown that there's a lunatic running loose? I could, but nobody's going to pay any attention to it. Why not? These lacerations are not the official cause of death. I'd be hard put to prove otherwise. I brought something along that might help us prove it. <sighs> this is. Some... You see those serrated teeth there? Mm -hmm. All right, that's what could have caused the bone fragments in Gilbert's and Torres' hair. You know, you're terrific, Delaney. Where'd you find this? In a surplus shop downtown. Can you leave it with me? I want to run some tests. Sure. Will it take long? No. Edward. Well, how are you feeling, kiddo? Any better? Tired. Can't seem to wake up. You look tired, too. What have you been up to? Well, I'll tell you if you promise to eat a bite of dinner. I heard from that fellow about the house in Greenport. He's repainted it, and he says it looks lovely. And there's a path that goes all the way down to the beach. Does it have shutters? Yes, it has shutters. And a fence? If it hasn't got a fence, we'll get one, pick it. We'll paint it white. You. Not me. What do you mean, you, not me? I'm not painting the fence on my vacation. Oh, sorry. Is it Christmas yet? No, darling, but very soon. Get a nice fall tree. And don't throw the tinsel on. Put it on strand by strand. Strand by strand. And get a nice roasted duck. Two roasted ducks. It might seem unconventional to you, but I feel like I'm in a box. The rules I used to rely upon don't work for me anymore. And I'm running out of time, so consequently, I've asked you to come up here. I need a couple of more hands. Now, I believe that the person we're looking for committed his first killing about two years ago in the uh, Brooklyn Heights section. Six months later, two more identical killings occurred on the outskirts of Kew Gardens in Queens. Didn't the police uh, notice the similarities? Probably, but he moved so quickly into other areas that there's never a chance for a real pattern to get set up. My God. Then, after a lull of several months, he struck again. This time in the Bronx, in the uh, Riverdale section. Three more killings, no witnesses, no motives, all within a period of one month. And now... He's in Manhattan, somewhere on the west side, where I believe he's responsible for two recent killings and possibly a third in the last two weeks. 
Now, the odds are against us, but I'm hoping that you'll be able to find in these cards the change of address of a customer whose address corresponds with the 11 killings in the past two years. Uh, uh, Sergeant, mm -hmm. uh, how do you know he doesn't uh, drive or take a subway to the murder scene? No, because they all happen in clusters, Mr. Langley. I think what he does is that he moves into a neighborhood, familiarizes himself with the whole area, watches the goings and comings of people, and then he strikes. Well, we'll certainly give it our best effort, Sergeant. Now, there are some cold cuts, soft drinks, or something a little harder, if you wish. And uh, just help yourselves, and I'll try to get back in a few hours. And thank you very much for what you're doing. It's really quite nice. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, Mrs. Gilbert, where shall we begin? <laughs> well, with as much work as we've got here, let's start with, well, one place is just as good as the other, let's say. R. <laughs> How is she, Doctor? She's just been sedated. Would you mind waiting outside, please? I'll be right back. Well, Sergeant, I understand you've been pursuing me rather frantically. Wouldn't you be doing the same thing under these circumstances? Of course. But the fact is that your wife's relapse was totally unexpected. Now, any of my colleagues could have explained that to you. No, I want to hear it from you. All right. The simple fact is the first series of antibiotics failed. However, we're working our way through a whole new spectrum, and time we're hoping for better luck luck doctors don't use luck they use medicine and brains not luck you know what i mean no i don't know what you mean we are doing everything possible to stop the infection listen she's sensible she's not sensible she rambles she's in she's out i don't know what the hell's going on now explain it to me that doesn't worry me you see with this it doesn't worry you you son of a bitch! That lady in there is my wife. She's my whole world. Do you understand that? Hold of yourself. She trusts you. She hired you. You keep giving her all that bullshit about antibiotics and steroids. Come on. And I think it's killing you instead of curing it. And why her? Calm down. Why her? Hey, hey, take it easy. Take it easy. Come on. Public place here. Come on. Now look, I, I. I can't answer why, okay? Sometimes the practice of medicine is unfair. The drugs we use on one patient don't. Look, I don't want to lose her any more than you do, Sergeant. I'm doing what I can. Jesus, Edward, we've, we've known each other since the Academy, almost 30 years. And you still can't reach out when you're in pain. How long has she been in the hospital? About 10 days. But damn you, why didn't you call? Janet would have been out every day. Mm -mm. That's exactly what Barbara didn't want. She made me promise I wouldn't tell anybody until she got out of the hospital. Hey, but what's the use of having friends if you can't call them in an emergency? I don't understand you. You through bitching on me, Ben? Yeah. Yeah, I'm through. Why are you here? I want you to help me get a body exhumed. <laughs> My gray robin days are over, man. Now, what I mean is I need a superior officer to sign a writ so that I can get a court order. So what's the matter with uh, McGraw? Mr. McGraw is no longer our commander. He's been replaced by Mr. Broughton. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot that jerk had been moved over to the 27th. Yeah, he was moved. I had some words with him the other day, and he gave me nothing but a bunch of bullshit. He's a mean mother to mess with, Edward. That's why I want to go around him. That's why I'm coming to you. Yeah, but in trying to move around him, it's going to feel like y'all messing with him. He's going to come out like a mad bull, and he's going to jump all over both of us. You mean he's got that much juice? He's plugged straight into the mayor's office. He's the kind of honky that believes every black officer should be riding a tricycle over traffic control. At least he's got something right. <laughs> now I hear you, Delaney. What do you want the writ for? I got a hunch, that's all, just a hunch. You want to tell me about it? Nope, because if I tell you about it, you might wind up in traffic control on a tricycle. <laughs> 
And you ain't beautiful enough for that kind of a job. Now listen, I take it easy on you. And don't push too hard. I'll try. Listen, tell Barbara that Janet and I ask about her. Yeah. And when she starts feeling better, we want to come visit her. I think she'll like that. Thanks, Ben. Remember me. You're so late. Well, we just finished up 10 minutes ago. I was just putting things away. Well, you didn't have to do that. I could have cleaned up later. Oh, I don't mind at all. I'd rather enjoy it. Mr. Langley's company was wonderful. You should have seen him in the last couple of hours. He tried so hard to stay awake. How'd you come out? Oh, not bad at all for amateurs. Um, we got through all those cards, believe it or not, and unfortunately, we only came up with three of the names of the pattern you described, but I put their names and addresses in alphabetical order. You've done better than I expected. Really? Yes. Well, I hope it works. So do I. Mr. Langley said that your wife was in the hospital. How's she feeling? Not too badly. But looking at her paintings, she's a very good artist. Yes, yeah, she's pretty good. Mm, well, I guess that's it. I better be getting home. I have a... Babysitter waiting there is probably going to give me hell for being so late. Thank you very much. Why don't you let me drive to both of your home? Oh, no. It's all right. Don't worry about it. I brought my car, and I don't mind giving Mr. Langley a lift. I'll wake him up now. Mr. Langley? Mm, yes, yes. Mrs. Gilbert. Yes, it's time to go. Ah, uh, Sergeant. Have you heard the good news? I heard. We finished. And you did damn well, too. Thank you. We were most meticulous. We filed, we cross-filed, we refiled. Now, it's up to you, Sergeant. I'll do the best I can, Mr. Langley. I know you will. I want to thank you both for what you've done. It's been quite marvelous. I'll talk. I have to keep some on the stove every night in order to wash my face. I think it's ridiculous. And the cockroaches and the mice. They just run all over everything. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And I think we all ought to do. Excuse me. Is there a Mr. Sawtell lives in this building? Yeah, I know him. He lives in the, the last door, in the back, the last door. And what about the garbage? Well, I, I tell you what I can do. Sawtell? Freeze! Freeze her right there, sucker! Get your hands higher. Hands higher, sucker! All right, fool, before you die, you want to tell me what you came to rob here? I just came over to wanted to talk to... The truth, or I'll blow you through that closet right into the next room. I'm Detective Sergeant Edward X. Delaney from the 27th Precinct. And I want to talk to Sawtell, Calvin Sawtell. My idea is in my left coat pocket. Get it out of here. 
Move it slow, slow. Real slow. Toss it back here. Okay, sucker. Now turn around real slow. I like to see a man's face before I blow his brains out. <laughs> Wasn't that great? You know, I never thought I'd get a chance to use all that corny dialogue you hear on television. No, oh, you hear a lot of laughs. I mean, Kojak would have pumped five bullets in me by now. When did all this happen to you? Who remembers? I slipped on a banana peel coming down Mount Whitney. What'd you want to know? I'm here because my report reads that you moved four times in two years. Would you like to tell me why? Maybe I'm looking for more banana peels to slip on. It's none of your damn business. You're right. None of my damn business. Hey. What'd you want to know? I just wanted to know why you move so often. Because I got a wife who's as big an asshole as you are. Keeps moving me from one VA hospital to the next looking for a miracle. Hey, sucker! Bang, bang. <laughs> bang, bang. For Christ's sake, pal, will you move the car? Move the car! Excuse me, excuse me, sir. Who are you looking for? Daniel Blank, 21C. Uh, he's at work. You know, this is a full security building. Uh, you're not supposed to walk in and out of here like this Grand Central Terminal. I'm a private investigator. My name is Wade Miller. Well, what do you want Mr. Blank for? Nothing big. He's been romancing a young kid about 18 who's the daughter of a client of ours. Picked her up in the disco a couple of weeks ago. She's blonde, about 5'6", nice ass, good-looking pair of jugs. See anybody like that around here? I see ten a day like that. Unless she's got a wooden leg, I wouldn't remember. Her old man's big bucks, and he's worried that she's getting serious. He's also worried that Blank might be a doper, or maybe even a pimp of some type. Look, you on an expense account? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, hold it. Hello, Mrs. Stern. Hi. Looks like it might rain a little yes. later today. Yes, it's very damp out. Uh-huh. Has the mailman come in? No, no, but it's a little late because of Christmas deliveries. Yeah. Will you let me know when he comes? Of course. You. You'll be the first one I call. Thank you. Right. Now, what were we talking about? I just want to be sure that you and I are talking about the same guy. What's he look like? About 30, 35, six feet two, good build, dark hair. But I'm on days. I don't know what kind of snatch he's bringing in here at night. Any matinees? No, he usually drives out in the morning, 9.15, comes back 5, 5.30, 6. You know anybody lives with him? Not that I know of. Uh, he's only been here six months. He's on a short lease. Meaning what? <sighs> Oh, he's due to move out in two weeks. Do you know he has any hobbies, you know, like tennis or golf or something like that? I don't know. He's a climber, a mountain climber. I helped him down with his junk last week in his car. What kind of cars you got? White 75 Porsche. Have you ever noticed that he wears a black raincoat? Hey, look, what does that got to do with him banging an 18-year-old tomato? I don't know what he wears when it rains. I guess when it rains, he wears a raincoat. Hello, this is George. I'm very sorry. I think it was the rain we had over the weekend. All right? Yes, Mrs. Albertson, right. Right, maintenance will be up in about a half hour, yes. I think there's some place on the ninth floor right now. 
maintenance people have promised to uh, help us out and do something about it, yes. Yes? Thank you. As soon as they're finished, I'll personally make sure that yours is the very next appointment on their list. All right? Bye-bye. Are you turning this into a country club? Oh, very cute, very cute. Okay, give me the keys, pal. The meters run out on your 20 bucks. Well, it cost me for the key in 10 minutes to look around. No. I'll let you go upstairs, it's my buns. About 50. I'll knock down a thousand in tips over Christmas. You want me to put my balls on the line for 50 clams? What are you kidding? Oh, come on. 100? Yeah. This way he works? Yeah, how about tomorrow morning? How about right now? The building maintenance people are around. You know, I'm getting in a lot of trouble. Tomorrow. 629, are you kidding, man? The man from 629 from that building told me to come here to 627. This is where this company is. I'm not gonna go back there, back and forth. I've been doing that twice now, man. I can't. What do you think I am? A yo-yo or something? Hey, will you I shut gotta up take a this to the Old city insurance. Oh, shit. Where do the employees from the Jarvis publication park their cars? I gotta check out a clinic. Fire level four. Thanks. Hey, why are you talking to this guy before me, man? What do you think I am? I'm a human being. Do you know what you do with this? Take it. No, you Hey, don't. come back here. Hey, take this stuff with you. Jesus, I'm just not going to do it anymore. I spent my whole lunch hour just waiting for somebody to take my money. Then they give me a slip of paper to get him gift wrap. And the gift wrap line, you should have seen the gift wrap line, goes halfway around the door and on the next block. I tell you, I have it. Is this the 629 building? Yes, it is. Thank you. Bigger dumps than that one in 18 C of St. Bernard. Another one makes me crazy. Got the 100? Okay, let's get it straight. 10 minutes and that's it. Now, the building phone is hooked up into the private phone. Anything happens, I'll ring it three times. 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, shut up! All right, give me a break. You're making me crazy.
Look, pal, the hunter brought you 10 minutes, you know, not a half hour. What are you, deaf up there? I'm sorry. I really am. Thanks very much. Sorry. Your love gives me a thrill, but it don't pay the bill. Bring some money next time. Suppose you got the right guy. He's a white Anglo executive. Any half-ass lawyer will have him back on the street in 24 hours. You want some coffee? No, oh, thanks. His pattern fits all the killings in all the other boroughs. Fine, so he moves around a lot. No judge will issue a warrant. We have to have just cause. He's a mountain climber and he owns an ice axe. So what? You just can't enter a person's home and search it just like that. You have to have a reason to assume that a crime has been committed and that a search will procure evidence to prove that crime. I've seen the evidence. You illegally entered his home. The judge is more likely to throw you in jail than he is your suspect. You're just going to have to wait him out. Wait what out? Wait until he goes out and kills again and I come out of an alley and nail him? You get in a restaurant now, you'll do nothing but tip him off. That's it, right? Okay, Delaney, okay. I'll try to get the writ to have the Torres body exhumed, and I'll speak to Captain Broughton personally. No, no, no. I don't want you to speak to Broughton. I'll get him to look at your reports. There are no reports. Delaney, Delaney, wow. First you tell me you can't give me the suspect's name, and now you tell me there are no reports. How do you expect me to help you? Do me a favor, will you? Don't worry about it. Okay, Delaney.
Good evening, sir. Good evening. Could you tell me if Daniel Blank lives in this building? Yes, sir, apartment 21C. No, 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 just a moment. I don't want to disturb now. It's a little late. I just want to know I'm if he lives sure here. He's in. No, 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 please. I'll call him tomorrow. Meanwhile, tell him that an old friend of his stopped by to say hello, okay? Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Mr. Blank? I'll get the door, Mike. What's it like out there? Uh, it's cold. Looks like it might even snow. I hope not. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Blank. Mm -hmm. Some man called by to see you just a little while ago. Who was it? He didn't give a name. Just said he was an old friend of yours. Thank you.
All right, come on, Blank. Come on. No, it's all I'm right, afraid. come on. No, I'm afraid. I knew you'd find me. I knew I could never hide anything from you. I can explain everything. All right. Suppose you tell me about it. Friends, we found truth together. Because we came so close, it, it was far more than, than physical or, or romantic love. You see, it, in love, two people still retain their, their, their secret selves. But, but in death, see, that gap, it disappears. The act of dying is the ultimate act of surrendering. I mean, you, you really, you, you, you enter into another human being. And, see, and, and through that moment of violence, I mean, for, for that split second, you enter into all humans. I mean, you merge together. Every fiber of being. And they go on living inside. They, they are, all of them now, living inside me. I mean, they're part of my life. And I love them. 
And they love me. It is wrong if you think I meant to hurt them. Do you understand this? You didn't bring the leather bindings this time. Or those, those wooden blocks for my feet. Thank you. All right, Daniel. I want you to get dressed now. What for? Come with me. Where? Never mind where. Just get your clothes on and come with me. <laughs> God, 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 not the cellar, not the cellar, please, God, not the cellar. It's so cold and dark there. No, 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 Daniel. I'm going to take you to a place that's warm and where there are people we can talk to. I don't want to leave here. Why do I have to talk to anybody else? We haven't any choice, Daniel. Yes, we do. We have choices. You said we deny everything. We, if we're very careful, they'll never find out our secrets. We, they'll never find us. Now, come on, Daniel. You're not my... You're... You're... It was very clever of you. You, you tricked me. You, you deceived me. I'd forgotten how devious your kind can be. How'd you know that's what frightens me most? Darkness, shadows, making me undress. Stand there and wait in all that freezing cold. That's not you. The, I'll deny everything. I'll deny you were even here. All right, Mr. Uh, whatever your name is, what is it you want? Exactly, huh? Blackmail? Extortion? Well, I'm not paying you anything, so you just get that little notion right out of your head. Because, see, this time, I have influential friends who are above reproach, and I have very high standing in this community. And my lawyer, his father just happens to be a Supreme Court justice. So I want you out. Out. Dare you accuse me? You weak, sniveling hypocrite. It's people like you who are destroying the fabric of this society. But there's laws to protect me against people like you. Trespassing, breaking and entering. I'm going to call the police. Yes, give me the police, please. Someone's broken in my apartment. Well, 21 H. Uh, the, uh, the address. Well, uh, 525 West 83rd. Daniel Blank. No, I'm in no physical danger. Will you, Bob? See that Captain Broughton gets us in the morning? Yes, sir. Take care of yourself. Hey, Delaney. Just got a homicide in West 83rd. Some hot shot executive just got blown away on the 21st floor. You want to roll with it? No. Yeah. Just handed in my papers. You really did it, huh? Congratulations. Thanks. Won't be the same here without you. It's always the same, Sergeant. Yeah, yeah, lady, I'm still here, and I'm real sorry your dog is lost, but it's almost 2.30 in the morning, and the pound don't open for a couple hours. Uh-huh. Well, if you can't sleep, take a, take a taxi down here. Be first online when it opens. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Well, that's what I get paid for, ma'am. Right. Yeah, well, uh-huh. So while her daddy fixed the car, my mommy made sandwiches for the picnic. Uh, 
Honey Bunch decided to visit her garden in the woods one more time. When she got there, she was surprised to see her neighbor, the little old lady who lived nearby. Is this your garden, asked the little old lady. Yes, it is, said Honey Bunch, proudly. It's beautiful, said her friend. Do you want me to tend it until you return next year? Oh, that would be so nice, exclaimed Honey Bunch. remember honey bunch that people who grow flowers in beautiful colors are all very special people not only do they find pleasures every day but they also plant the seeds of tomorrow for others to enjoy and then honey bunch ran to tell her mommy And her daddy, what a lucky little girl she was. And that this had been the happiest adventure of her life. <laughs> <laughs> 